Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. This is the seventh video in our Langsmith evaluation series. Um, so our first video gave kind of a context as to why evals are interesting and important. The second video talked about Langsmith primitives. Our third video showed how to create manually curated data sets. We built one based upon this Databricks blog post. Um, the fourth one showed how to build data sets for user logs. So if you have an app in production, you want to kind of capture user questions and create a data set from them, you can very easily do that. We talked through that. Um, we then talked about various judges for data sets, so different types of evaluators. We showed how to build, use a built-in Langchain evaluator um, for question answering. We applied that to our Dataverse data set. Um, and we just talked through custom evaluator. So again, we've kind of showed this, this flow diagram and go to, both, go to those videos if you want to kind of deep dive into those topics. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun. So this is where, you know, you kind of get into like very real world use cases and, and needs. You often want to do comparisons. So let's ask a really practical question. How does Mistral 7B running locally on my laptop compare to GPT-35 Turbo on this little challenge we've set up? Again, remember, we have a four question eval set uh, on this Databricks blog post. How does an open LLM do versus uh, GPT-35 Turbo? So just a little note here, I'm using Alama for this. Um, just you can download it going to uh, uh, alama.com. You can do Alama pull Mistral to get the model and you can kind of follow instructions here. Um, so here's my setup. I'm gonna create a new function that does the same thing that we already were doing with OpenAI, but here I'm going, using Mistral. This is running locally on my laptop. So again, it just I can answer, ask and answer questions about the particular blog post. So I just answered, I just asked the question and here we go. So, you know, the answer is streaming out. Very good. And it's obviously slower than OpenAI is exactly what we would expect. But what we really care out here is I want to know about quality. How does it actually compare on this little challenge I built for myself? So what are we actually doing? Uh, here, we have a developer curated data set of four examples on this Databricks blog post. Um, I'm using LM as a judge again. Remember the built-in COT QA evaluator I'm using. Um, and I ground truth answers for every question. I'm doing an A-B test between GPT-3.5 Turbo and Mistral running locally on my laptop. So that's the setup. Um, and it's pretty easy. So remember, we've already built or defined this data set DBRX. We've already used this evaluator COTQA, so that doesn't change at all. All that changes is I'm just passing in this new function now. Now let's go back and look at that function. It looks exactly like our old one, a few little twists. I'm using OLAM instead of OpenAI. That's really it. Same output object. Answer, you know, addict with an answer. That's it. Simple. We just saw it work here. So what I can do is kick off this eval. This will take a little bit because it's running locally. I have an M2 Mac uh, with 32 gigs, by the way. So that kind of gives you some sense. I've, I've heard a lot of people having good results using Mistral 7B but on, on far smaller machines, though. So... It's a really nice open model to work with if you want. And you can see it's still churning. It's streaming its answers out here. It's actually done, but it didn't take that long. It ran against my four questions. Now here's where it can get really interesting. Let's go over to my data set. Now I can see here that there's three runs. So this is our initial run uh, or experiment you can think of with OpenAI. This is that second one to do with a custom evaluator. We're not interested in that. That was just kind of a quick more unit test that wasn't a proper kind of LLM based evaluation. And now here's our latest one. So here's where it gets really interesting. I can click on um, this and this. So my Mistral run, my OpenAI run, and I can click this compare thing. That opens up this compare mode. You can already see some nice statistics here. So what I can see is a like average score. So the first run, which was OpenAI, indeed does quite a bit better in terms of score. Latency, as exactly what we would expect, Mistral slower by quite a bit. Um, and here's like latency distribution and so forth. So you get some immediate statistics about the two runs. Now here's where I've done a lot of work in the past, and you know this is kind of the crux of A/B testing. That's extremely useful. I um, mean, that's why it's very helpful to do this inside Langs, but this is all kind of captured for you. Managing this all yourself is can be quite painful. Here's my first question. Here's the reference output. Here is the output returned by Mistral. 
here's the output returned by OpenAI. So I can actually look at those in detail. I can like kind of zoom in, look at the answers and like, hey, they, they look very similar here. That's really cool. And you can see my grader also assesses them both as correct. And again, we talked about, you can actually click on the evaluator run for each case to see why, but they look good. Now here's where it gets a little interesting. It looks like my mistral running locally is, is did not receive a correct grade. Um, and OpenAI did. So let's actually look at what was the question? What is the context window for, of the DRBX that dropped model? Okay, so it's 32K token, right? What did Mistral think? Uh, context window is, ooh, 2048. So that is definitely wrong. And we would have to investigate as to why Mistral believed that to be the case. It could be, you know, there could be many different reasons why I failed for that one. But indeed, our grader is correctly grading that as, as, a, as a wrong response. For fun, we can actually dig in and look at uh, that particular grading trace, and we can see why. Sue's so answer is incorrect. The student states that the context window is 2048. Um, the context says clearly 32K. There you go. So the grader is doing the same thing. And we can kind of go through each one. So this is like a toy example, but it shows you a very important, useful concept of comparative A-B testing. So like you might want to compare different prompts, different LLMs, and this is a very nice way to do that. You can see it's extremely simple. We've just supplied our data set name. Um, so we're, of course, running these against the same data set where, you know, typically I like to apply different experimental prefix to, uh, to enumerate the different experiments I'm running. So that's easy. You can also capture that in metadata, by the way. So that's another way to kind of differentiate your experiments. Um, and I'm using the same grader, of course. And I'm just modifying the, the, my function, which in this case was just, hey, swapping out Mistral, uh, swapping, swapping in Mistral for, for OpenAI. So again, this just shows you how to use this compare mode in Langsmith to do A-B testing really nicely. Um, in this particular case, we're comparing Mistral versus OpenAI. We can look at, you know, kind of overall run statistics as well as granular answer-wise differences. We can inspect the grader as shown here. We can look at the runs as shown here. So this gives you a very flexible general place to do A-B testing uh, across different parameters. In this case, I use different uh, different LLMs. Um, and I've used this all the time for lots of different kind of projects. And it is indeed quite useful. It's very nice to have this all kind of managed in one place for you. Um, so we're going to be kind of diving into some uh, deeper themes after this. This is kind of the final video of our like kind of introductory concepts. So if we kind of zoom all the way back out, what did we talk through? We just talked through... Manual, building your manually curated data set, in this case, running LM as a judge against the ground truth for A-B testing. So we kind of went through that. We also had talked through, um, you know, same setup, but basically just simple unit tests using custom evaluators. We talked through, um, yep, we talked through, yeah, different data set creation. Yeah, we talked through, here we go, LM as a judge with ground truth. Um, so for like, you know, uh, just, just uh, you know, LM is greater evaluation, um, but no A-B tests. So in that case, it's just looking at like a single a single model and evaluating it using LM as, as the judge. Um, we talked about the information flow for evaluation. We talked about different ways to build data sets from user logs, from manual curation. And that's really it. This gives you kind of like the groundwork you need to do a lot of different things. Uh, building custom evaluators and A-B testing is frankly, a, covers a huge service area of use cases. Uh, and we're going to do some deep dives following this, so stay tuned for, for additional videos. Thanks.